Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Mass key skill video on dealing with a single chain of outcomes involving successive dependent events. Now let's look at this question. I pick two balls from a bag of seven red balls and three green. And note the implication, by the way, is if you pick two balls, you're picking one ball and then you're not putting that first ball back because then you're then picking a second ball so you then have two balls in your hand. So we want to fill in this probability tree first. So on the first pick of ball, we could either get a red or green ball. And remember, on a probability tree, we put the probabilities on these branches, these lines here. So what's the probability of getting red on the first pick? Well, we've got 10 balls in total and seven of them are red. So it's going to be seven tenths probability of getting a red ball on the first pick and three tenths of getting green because three out of the 10 balls are green. Now, because once you've taken the first ball, you're not putting it back, that's going to affect the probabilities on your second pick. So let's just say that we picked a red ball on our first pick. What have we got left? Well, we've got six red balls left, but we've still got the free green. So on our second pick, the probability of getting red again is going to be six out of nine, because out of the nine balls that are left, six of them are red. So notice, by the way, that the denominator went down by one because there's one less ball to pick from in total. And the numerator also went down because if I picked a red on my first pick, there's one less red to pick from. So there's now six red left. Now, if there's six ninths probability of getting red, there'd be three ninths probability of getting green, given that I picked red on the first pick. Now, what about if I picked a green on my first pick? So if I wanted like green followed by red, if I picked a green on my first pick, I've now got two green left and seven red. So the probability of getting red on my second pick, well, it's still going to be seven red balls because I didn't pick a red on the first pick. I've still got the seven red balls left, but it's going to be out of nine because I've got one less ball again because I picked the green on my first pick. I looked at this in my separate video on filling out a probability tree. And then the probability of getting green is going to be two nines because if we picked a green, we got two green left, seven red. So out of the nine balls left, two of them are green. Hence determine the probability of picking green, then red. Now we've seen elsewhere that we can write out that sequence, the probability of getting green and then red. And all we do is we follow the probability tree from left to right. So we want green followed by red. So the probability of getting green, which is three tenths, and then given that we've picked green, then picking red, we can see is seven ninths. So let's write those probabilities in this particular path through the tree, green, then red. And what do we do to those two probabilities? Well, we want the probability that the first ball is green and the second is red. I use the word and, and when you use the word and with probabilities, you times. So you times these together, not add them. And then if you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the numerators, so three times seven is 21. 10 times nine, when we multiply the denominators, is 90. And we could simplify this, that's gonna give you seven over 30. Now this second question is just to demonstrate that we can solve these kind of questions without having to draw out a probability tree. I'm just gonna use my strategy of listing out whatever outcomes match. So I've got five red counters, three green, two blue. I pick two counters at random. What's the probability that both are green? So let's actually write out the sequence of outcomes. If they're both green, I'm just gonna write GG for green and green with a colon after. So what's the probability that the first pick of counter is green? Well, there's 10 counters in total, 5 plus 3 plus 2 is 10, and of those 10 counters, 3 of them are green. So the probability of the first pick being green is 3 tenths. Then I've now got that green in my hand. So that one green counter is now out of my bag, it's no longer in the bag. So what have I got left? Well, I've still got five red left, but I've only got two green left, and I've still got those two blue left. So we've now got nine counters left because I've taken that one counter out, so it's going to be out of nine. And of those nine counters, how many of those are green? Well, we've got that one green in our hand, but we've still got the two green left, so it's two ninths. So notice, by the way, that the, the numerator went down by one because I've got one less green ball, and the denominator goes down by one because we've got one less ball overall. Now, what the probability the first is green and the second is green, I use the word and, I times these together, and three times two is six, 10 times nine is 90. We could simplify this if we wanted to. 90 divided by six exactly to give 15, so it's one out of 15. And that is the final answer.